Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hasha Ali Khan. So now in this video, I'm going to explain you the theory regarding diagrammatic and graphic presentation of statistical data. So this theory, this video is very important for attempting the theory question if it is asked in examination regarding how to make the graphs, how to make the diagrams by collecting the statistical data. So I'll begin with the meaning of the terms diagrams and graphs. So pictures, a picture is worth a thousand words. It is a saying that picture will have a greater impact in the minds of the reader instead of having huge amount of data. So pictures will convey much more message than words. So statistical, one of the objective of collection of statistical data is the statistical data should be collected and classified and conveyed to the reader in the most simple way. So here diagrams and graphs will, uh, will convey the message in a very clear manner to the reader. So that's why graphs and uh, diagrams will play a very important role in statistics in presentation of the <coughs> data. So importance of diagrams, reduce huge amount of data. First of all, <clears throat> the diagrams and graphs will reduce the huge amount of data into simple attractive manner. <clears throat> and easily, the person who reads the graphs or diagrams can easily understand the message instead of going through the huge amount of data. Secondly, immediate through diagram. That means the message will be conveyed through diagram immediately without uh, I mean waste much waste of time so diagrams will uh, give the advantage that easily without any loss of time the person can get the complete message next one positive and lasting impression the diagrams the graphs will give a lasting impression in the minds uh, mind of the reader instead of going through the huge voluminous data simply by having a glance at the diagram at the graph we can have a large impact large impact in our minds then can reach greater audience that means the complete data it will be difficult to send the message whereas the graphs and diagrams can give the to more large number of people the audience uh, large audience can be covered with the help of diagrams and graphs facilitate comparison of data by having the data in diagrams and uh, pictures form we can make easily compare easily comparison so that is also one of the importance of diagrams have universal acceptance so there are some diagrams some uh, pictures which are universal in character that means throughout the world the meaning of this particular diagram is understood in the same way universal acceptance lastly it saves time it saves effort that means less effort we require to make the diagram to make the graph so these are uh, this shows the importance of diagrams and graphs in statistical data presentation but there are some limitations of di diagrams the limitations of diagrams are it, uh, it if more details are packed in a diagram message is lost that means if the data is more complicated, voluminous data is there, we cannot put the voluminous data or detailed data in the graph. The graph will become clumsy, it will become confused. So the one of the limitations of graph is if the data is simple data, we can be able to present the data in graphical form. If the data is very complicated, huge data, complicated data, then it is difficult to present in pictorial form. May create a visual illusions and can be misleading. One of the limitations of graphical presentation or diagrammatic presentation is visual illusion can be easily made. That will mislead the reader of the data. So there are chances of making vision illusion. illusion. So then only experts can draw good, good diagrams. It's not an easy job to make the diagram, to make the graph. Only experts can be able to make those types of diagrams or graphs, which mean the end objective. Cannot be a substitute for tabular presentation. 
remember these diagrams and uh, graphs are not substitute to the original presentation of data in tabular form they are only supplement these or diagrams and graphs are only supplements to the original tabular form then <clears throat> these are some of the limitations so we have seen the importance and limitations of diagrams and graphs in the presentation of statistical data now rules for constructing for diagrams are first one title every diagram diagram should have a suitable title without title we cannot be able to convey the message in the diagram secondly scale scale means what i mean what is the size of the diagram it depends on the situation the diagram should neither be too long nor the diagram should be very short the suitable scale should be selected for drawing the diagram width and height appropriate width and height of the diagram should be selected the next one is choice of diagram there are many types of diagram <clears throat> in order to select the diagram we have to keep in mind the message which we are going to give lastly neatness if the diagram is neat then only it will it can be able to convey the correct message it should not be clumsy it should not be confused the diagram so these are some of the rules to be followed while drawing while making the diagrams and graphs now types of diagrams broadly the diagrams can be divided into two categories called line diagram and bar diagram line diagram we simply draw a line on the graph paper that means depicting the data through a line example on x axis we have taken one variable on y axis we have taken the frequency now by a line diagram we uh, by a line through a line on the graph paper we are showing the information the so statistical data is presented only by drawing a line on the graph secondly bar diagram <clears throat> this is the most commonly used diagram bar diagram in this case rectangular bar diagram rectangular rectangles are made on the vertical axis uh, horizontal axis x axis depicting each diagram one variable example the normally in the case of government in the case of business organization the data relating to profit sales uh, production or import export and foreign exchange reserves all these things will be depicted by a bar diagram so types of bar diagram bar diagrams are of many types like simple bar diagram component bar diagram <clears throat> percentage bar diagram or multiple bar diagram different types of bar diagrams are there example if we are only a single variable we can use the simple bar diagram first simple bar diagram only one bar will be used for one characteristic for example we have the sales for the last 5 years the last 10 years 5 years or 10 years whatever it may be so we are having the sales so we are putting the bar each bar for one year the sales for first year the sales for second year third year like that we can depict the bars each bar consists of one particular year of sales next component bar diagram in this in this case instead of uh, I mean showing one variable we can show two or more than two variables in a single bar <coughs> in a single bar simple example <coughs> in a college how many students got admitted <coughs> in commerce stream in science stream in arts stream so three variables we want to show for every year for in one year <coughs> how many students got admitted in science stream how many go students got admitted in commerce stream in art stream <coughs> so all the variables we are depicting in one bar so that is called component bar percentage bar we convert the actual data into percentages and we take the percentages on y axis 0 10 20 30 like that percentage so instead of depicting the actual values we are converting the actual values into percentages and depicting the per percentages in the bar diagram last one multiple multiple bar diagrams so instead of one um, rectangle we are taking two three rectangles for example we want to compare the sales production profit three variables we want to compare in each year 
so instead of uh, one bar three bars we are drawing for every year so this is called multiple bar diagram now pi diagram pi diagram is a circular diagram that means the complete entire data we are depicting in a circle a circle will have 360 degrees so first of all we convert the actual data into degrees for example the total is 10,000 so 10,000 will be treated as 360 degrees then we convert all the values of each uh, component into degrees form and all the degrees will be depicted in a slice of the pie a circle a complete circle will be drawn and each of the component will be a slice in that pie depicting the particular degrees so in this way a pie diagram will be shown pictograms pictures will have a long lasting appealing impact in the minds of the reader so instead of actually showing bars or line diagrams we can show the pictures and those are called pictograms it will have a lasting impact in the mind of the reader now graphs so far we have discussed about the diagrams now we'll discuss about graph graph is a special mode of presenting the data on a paper specialized paper that paper is a graph paper which shows smooth horizontal and vertical lines so a graph paper will have four quadrants first quadrant second quadrant third quadrant fourth quadrant in the first quadrant we have all positive values x values and y values are positive values so by uh, collecting the data statistical data and presenting on a graph paper we can get the graphs so techniques of constructing the graph so the data will be collected and put the graph on two axes x-axis and y-axis so we can present the data on this horizontal axis and vertical axis the graphs again are divided to two categories like time series graph or frequency distribution graph the first histogram histogram <clears throat> histogram is the most commonly used graph in, in this case the on x-axis will take the time on y-axis will take the frequency and we draw rectangles called histograms for example the year and sales the sales are shown on the y-axis year is shown on the x-axis for every year how much are the sales a rectangle will be drawn that 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 is called histogram and frequency polygon when all histogram is completed a smooth curve will be drawn from the midpoint of from the midpoint of each rectangle from the midpoint of each rectangle and we join all the curve then we'll get frequency polygon and also frequency curve a smooth curve is drawn joining all the top of the histogram we'll get frequency curve now frequency curves are also to give curves or give curves means the cumulative frequency curve this is most fre more frequently asked in examination about ogive curves the ogive curve is a cumulative frequency distribution curve the two ogives are there more than ogive and less than ogive less than ogive is a elongated s like shape it moves from left to, to right just in s form so to draw this less than ogive curve less than ogive curve we we take the upper boundary of the cumulative frequency upper boundary will take upper boundary and then cf cumulative frequency the upper boundary so we will take it on the x axis and cumulative frequency will take it on the y axis so we we'll plot all the points a s shaped like curve will will get so that is less than ogive more than ogive will take the lower boundary of each class interval and cumulative frequency and will get more than ogive curve it is downward sloping it is downward sloping in s form so less than ogive if it is if this is the graph paper the less than ogive will be like this and more than ogive will be like this so the two ogives will join at a particular point this will give you median so by drawing two ogives curves the point where two ogives curves will intersect 
that point will will give you the median so this is the advantage of drawing or give curves so this is the brief theory regarding the diagrammatic and graphic presentation of the data